Welcome to Simplify Your Retirement with Certified Financial Planner Stephen Strickland from Wise Wealth LLC. In this podcast, we help individuals and couples plan for a peaceful and enjoyable retirement. Join us on this journey where we explore the importance of simplifying the retirement planning process as Stephen, with his years of experience and expertise in retirement income planning, along with guest experts, will help you achieve first wisdom, then wealth. And don't forget to check out the Simplify Your Retirement online course and other great resources at SimplifyYourRetirement.com. Now, on to the show. Hello, and welcome to Simplify Your Retirement with Stephen Strickland from Wise Well. Good morning, Stephen. Good morning, Paul. It's great to be uh, back, and we'll look forward to our uh, episode today. Absolutely. Here in Season 4, I know we have a lot of guests uh, on this this season. So it's, it's going to be a really exciting season, I believe. Um, we've had some had a great guest already. Uh, we talked about inflation. It was a very riveting topic, but timely for sure. And uh, today, I'm excited to hear the guest that you've brought on today. Can you tell me a little bit more about him? Yeah, absolutely. We're uh, I'm excited to uh, bring on as our uh, guest for today's show, David Roselle. Uh, David is the author of a book, Failure is Not an Option, mm. Creating Certainty in the Uncertainty of Retirement. Um, um, as most people know that uh, when you educate other people, you have to constantly continue to be educated yourself. And so I certainly do a lot of reading and enjoy reading uh, different you know, financial books and uh, articles and things like that. And this book uh, really was outstanding. I, I read the entire book, uh, Failure is Not an Option by David Roselle. I really enjoyed it um, just as a financial planner. And uh, David is a financial planner as well. He's the president and founder of Roselle Wealth Management uh, in Bend, Oregon. Um, David's inspiration and zest for life has been shaped by a lifetime of international adventures, uh, which you'll find out a lot about, you know, if you get this book with a current tally of more than 75 countries Wow! <laughs> on six different continents. His quest for extreme travel has included hitchhiking from Nairobi to Cape Town, Africa, <laughs> climbing the infamous peaks of the Nepalese Himalayas. And he was even one of the privileged to partake in tearing down the Berlin Wall. Yes, wow. he's got pictures to prove it in the book. You know, David, there's a lot more, you know, we could say, but I appreciate you being on the podcast with us today. Oh, Stephen and Paul, such a pleasure to be here today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I really, uh, I, I do want to say that, you know, the book uh, certainly was uh, entertaining to read, just really just about, you know, all the trips that you've been on, all all the adventures, Um um, you know, in a lot of ways, I was envious of all the places in the world you've been and just and just taking, I guess, the initiative and time to do it. I guess you know, I'll, I'll start with that. You know, our philosophy at our firm, our mission is to help people be to give and serve and enjoy life. And I know you're involved in all three, uh, but even just enjoying life, you know, what, what got you into travel? And uh, you want to tell us about some of these adventures? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh well, the three of us work so hard to educate our clients and educate the public out there about an incredibly important topic, that of financial planning. And yet, for most people out there, it's a very arduous, heavy topic. And after working all day and all week, one of the last things people really want to do is sit down and, and read a book or educate themselves on this important topic. Right. So I had this epiphany years ago to um, really mesh two of my passions, that of international travel, adventure travel, uh -huh. where that was helping people with their finances. So my intention was to set out and write this financial planning book, uh -huh. now working on the third book, okay. that uh, was not only educational, but was really fun to read. Uh -huh. And uh, and from the feedback from people like yourselves, yep. uh, it looks like we achieved that. So it's, yeah. been, it's been a fun journey. Yeah, it really has been. I know you wrote uh, another book before this one, Keep Climbing, uh, you know, obviously mountain climbing and uh, done a lot of these things. And it really is amazing, you know, the analogies that you can get, you know, from mountain climbing, uh, but from really from a lot of different adventures, you know, that you've been on. But uh, so, you know, when it comes to, you know, retirement planning and failure is not an option. I know that uh, from the title of the book, from the stories that I've read, it does seem like, um, that title of this book is really about, it is in relation to mountain climbing in some way. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, back in, it seems like my past life now, I did quite a bit of, of climbing 
And I, I would start each chapter with a one of the more riveting travel stories that then leads into a financial lesson. And when there's one too many graphs, it goes back into another yeah. travel story. <laughs> uh, but I, I start the book uh, sharing about a, a true life 21 day self guided trek in the Himalayas, and mm-hmm. uh, just share the ins and outs of that. Mm-hmm. And and then that kind of leads into uh, uh, an experience I had uh, years ago meeting mm-hmm. a gentleman named Ed Beesters. Mm-hmm. And um, some of your listeners out there will know who this gentleman is because he's probably the best mountaineer that ever walked the planet Earth. Mm. He is the only human that summited Everest seven times successfully and did so without supplemental oxygen. Mm. Wow. And I'll, I'll never forget the day that he said most people think – my goal when I set out from base camp is to get to the top. Right. And he said, that would actually be the last goal I would ever have. Mm-hmm. And I said, what do you mean? And he <laughs> said, well, what happens is 80% of the accidents and 80% of the deaths happen on the descent. Right. And he said, so when we're on the top, yeah, we're giving each other high fives and taking out the American flag. He said, but we still have the second half of the journey left. And it's the second half of this journey that takes on the most amount of risk and needs the most amount of planning. Mm -hmm. And that was my aha moment because I realized that as our clients reach their financial summit, Mm -hmm. let's call it financial independence, Mm -hmm. it's the last day that they're adding to their 401ks and 403bs and IRAs. And now they're going to live off of it for two, three, and some of our clients even four decades. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe it's the second half of the financial journey that also takes on the most amount of risks and needs the most amount of planning. Absolutely. I could not agree more. I love that analogy. It's, I think it's the perfect, um, you know, retirement planning analogy. And and most people, like you said, when they go mountain climbing, they're planning their goal, their mindset, their, their whole approach is getting to the summit, you know, getting to the top. And, And once they get up there, they've arrived. It's awesome. But do they have a plan for the getting down? Do they have a plan for the rest of the journey? And, and so many times we see that with retirement. So many people do a lot of work and you know, they spend a lot of time making sure they're investing the right amount and um, the right asset allocation. They get to the day where they can walk out the door of their job and they have finally retired. It's like putting the, the flag in the, on the summit. But it's like really the most dangerous part of their retirement journey has just begun. And most people spend a lot of time planning to get to that moment, but it's, you know, from that moment on that there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that people need to be aware of. And that could really, uh, you know, and mountain climbing could, you know, is where you said most of the accidents happen. And it's probably the same with retirement planning. Has that been your experience too? Most people make mistakes on after retirement than before. Yeah. Yeah. I I think, uh, you know, if as you guys know also well, for the last 15 years of doing such a great job with with your clients, uh, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. Mm-hmm. And the type of planning and the type of investment and insurance strategies that help people get to the financial summit mm-hmm. are not necessarily the most appropriate types of planning and strategies to help us get down safely. And when mm-hmm. I say get down safely, um, in the case of financial planning. It's really getting to the end of your life, living the life that you've really imagined with peace of mind, and most importantly, not outliving those resources. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think that's so important. I think a lot of people, um, you know, even when it comes to retirement planning, there, as we both know, there's a lot of people that still, the majority of their assets might be in their 401k. And they may work their entire life, leave all their money in the company 401k and think, you know what, I, I really don't need an advisor. I don't need a coach. I don't need a Sherpa. I got here on my own. And uh, therefore, and all the money's been in the 401k, it, 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 everything has worked out fine, but they don't realize that, you know, the most treacherous part of the journey is on the way down. So just because you made it to the summit, maybe without a coach, maybe without a financial advisor, without a financial planner, it doesn't mean that you could or should go throughout the rest of your life without one, because you mentioned it just a second ago, but also in your book, that um, there's a paradigm shift. The risks have changed. There's a lot of other obstacles on the way down. And that's where having someone who's an expert um, on the way down is extremely valuable. Yeah, you bring up a great point. So let's say, you know, there's millions of people out there based on not having the knowledge that will keep their 401k in their company 401k. And Mm -hmm. uh, let's say that it's invested um, with the asset allocation to try and achieve an eight or 9% rate of return. 
which may or may not be appropriate on the accumulation phase of life, but okay. a lot of people are are uh, earmarked for that type of return. Uh, I, the three of us would look at a typical retiree and say that is taking on way too much risk for the distribution phase. Right. Uh, and that's when I like to say that the return of your money at that point takes precedence on the yes. return on your money. Yep. And yet, of course, we have to outpace the challenging impact of inflation, which you did such a good job on your last podcast discussing. Right. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, and that's why I love the way you started this book. Failure is not an option. The first chapter is is really on this subject. You have to plan for the second half of the journey. Uh, it's not just getting to you know retirement. And I know that in the book you you mentioned that you you hate the word retirement. Um, <laughs> and so I, yeah, I keep using the word, but uh, so yeah, is there a reason why you don't like that word? And because uh, it's it's getting to that. It, it's not just getting there; it's getting beyond that. But uh, yeah, what what do you like to use instead of that word? Well. First of all, the reason why I really don't like that word retirement is uh, here's some useless trivia for the listeners out uh-huh. there. It comes from the Latin word retire, which is meaning is to be put out of use or to end. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason for this <laughs> is because, uh, you know, two generations ago, if we look at our grandparents or great grandparents, they would work for the same company most of their career. They get that gold watch. And what happened to them three or four years later? Mm-hmm. Right. They weren't, they typically weren't with us. <laughs> yeah. They yes. were retired. Yes. <laughs> good, good use of that word. And, yes. and, you know, social insecurity, as I like to refer mm-hmm. to it as, was really meant to help supplement that three or four year period of time. Right. Uh, now it's certainly not being used as its original intent. And your clients, you know, my clients don't get to the top of their financial peak and want to ever be put out of use for right. the end. Yes. Yeah, in, that, in many ways, they're just beginning, right? Yeah, this is the time they actually want to make an impact and want to be useful, not not the opposite, that's for sure. So, yeah, I appreciate yeah, that. I, I like, you know, making work optional, I guess, what are you, financial independence? You, you like using other terms. Yeah, because we all have experience with clients who get to that point and they're independent of the paycheck or financially independent. But yet they may choose a few years later after they realize they can't play golf twenty four seven to keep that mind active and wake up with a purpose and choose to start that business. Mm-hmm. I'll have right. an Airbnb, work at a coffee shop for crying right. out loud, yeah. as an example. Um, Maybe because do they some, don't want to be put out of use. That's right. Maybe do some uh, international travel, take some adventures. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. One of the things I really, uh, really enjoyed, honestly, about this book, and again, we're speaking with David Rosell. His website is davidrosell.com. It's R-O-S-E-L-L.com. You can you can find out more about him and his book, Failure is Not an Option. You know, a lot of people, I'll be honest with you, David, a lot of people, when I read uh, their books, there's always like a, you know, a quote or a statement at the beginning of the chapter. And a lot of times it's odd or meaningless or whatever, but I did find for whatever reason, the statements that you have like at the beginning of each chapter to be really, you know, intriguing and very interesting. Um, You know, one of them is just even like uh, a a quote here uh, when you talk about the impossible becomes a reality from John Wooden. Failure is not fatal, but failure to change might be. Right, yes. And so when it comes to retirement planning, you know, people may look at it and say, uh, some people who say, I've done it this way my whole life, this is the way that's worked, I'm not gonna change. We know that that could be, you know, fatal to their, you know, retirement plans and dreams and hopes. You know, that gets me thinking, you know, Tiger Woods, of course, was the best golfer in the world. And he had two coaches. Yeah. Here he is, the best golfer in the world. Why does he need a coach? Yep. Well, he needed to get to the next level. That was his goal. Yeah. And that's why your clients work with the both of you. Mm-hmm. They need these two coaches uh, because for most people out there, Um, they're just not informed on the planning. They don't have that ability to put it together. There are some out there that do, and they do a great job of doing this themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, But as John Wooden would say, uh, failure to change uh, can lead to failure. It usually does. And and getting guidance is uh, coming from a place of strength rather than weakness, in my opinion. Right. And and I think it goes into even, I know you in the the book with a chapter on overcoming the biggest obstacle – and it's, it's the person that we look at in the mirror every morning. <laughs> it's ourselves. And that's a lot of it, not being willing to, you know, take coaching. But I know there's more, you know, involved in that, you know, statement. The obstacle is us a lot of times 
But, uh, you know, why do you feel that it is? And, you know, what can we do about that obstacle to success in uh, financial independence? Yeah, I think, you know, the biggest obstacle, as you mentioned, is you, the people out there. You know, all we're our own worst enemy at times. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that chapter leads into my least favorite word. So retirement isn't my least favorite word, <laughs> okay. but the word, uh, the word fear is yeah. um, F E A R. And I, I look at that as false evidence appearing real. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, as James Allen and is a man thinketh says, you know, fear can kill us as fast as a speeding bullet. Right. And yep. uh, when it when it comes to fear and investing, a it's not having a plan in place. It's just brush this stuff under the rug, um, and right. a lot of it comes to market fear. Uh, right. And we're you know since January, we're just uh, investors are experiencing that already. Right. And and what the two of you do is such a good job with your clients is helping remove the fear from the markets, mm-hmm. and you're able to do so. By giving your clients perspective and realizing that, hey, one out of every four years, the markets are going to decrease. Right. How do we know that? Because it's always happened that right. way. And that there's never been a down market in the real estate market, in the stock yeah. market that hasn't rebounded hit an all-time high ever. That's right. And if we go back just less than two years ago, we go back you know, 22 right. months ago, Yeah. Um, it was the beginning of this global pandemic that's still upon us uh, really right. uh, set in. We realized that this is here. <laughs> yeah, reality set in, and right. as as we all remember, uh, in just a period of about a week, in March of 2020, the markets dropped 34 yes. percent. Amazing. And the three of us were in the in the mistake prevention business. That's mm. what we really get. Our, that's really one of our main purposes to yeah. stop our clients from making an emotional mistake. Correct. And I think that money is so um, emotional. It's very emotional in a wonderful way when we're earning it. Yep. And it's two to three times more emotional when we're losing it, even if it's just a paper loss. Right. And as we know, millions of Americans based on fear, Mm -hmm. false evidence appearing real, sold all their funds inside their 401ks Mm -hmm. and IRAs because they said, the four most expensive words in the English language, my partner Rodney likes to say, is, yep. this time is different. Right. And um, then, of course, by September, the markets were not only rebounded, but up 45%. Amazing. And now they're up close to 150% just since March of 2020. So it's time in the markets, not timing the markets that count. Absolutely, David. You know, could not agree more. You know, it's, it's amazing how short-term... Uh, you know, people get a lot of times with their thinking and, you know, making decisions based on what you said, fear a lot of times. And and the other mistake I think people make is when they make investment decisions based on greed. So you've got fear and greed, the two opposite ends of the spectrum and people make their decisions on that. Um, yeah, I love what you brought up there at the beginning of the, you know, the pandemic in early 2020. It's It's different this time. This has never happened before. It's like, we're experiencing it now, even with inflation. People are thinking, oh boy, inflation, this is going to be, this has never happened before. We're getting ready to experience all kinds of inflation. Well, it, it has happened before. We can look back, you know, decades and periods of times and see where it's been very high and back where it's been very low, but we also see the, you know, the historical averages. And so um, it, it's interesting, but it's human nature uh, for everyone to start feeling like, oh, it's different this time. And we've never had coronavirus, you know what I mean? But the, the markets tend to do what they're supposed to do over long periods of time. And the, the 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 thing that messes that up a lot of times is us. I couldn't agree more than that. Um, you know, one of the things that is hard to do for a lot of people, but I did, and I, I talk about it in the book, is I unplugged my t- TV years ago. Okay. And uh, I really think that TV, television spreads fear, whether yeah. it's a commercial on different medicines that are going to save the day, but have more side effects that are that are worse than the original ailment. Yep. Uh, or, or watching the news. Uh, I mean, there's nothing ever good about the news. Right. And, um, you know, they'll say the market's dropped 110 points today. Yeah. What does that mean? Right. And is that such a bad thing? Yes. Um, and and people are like, oh my god, the markets are, are. And then the second day in a row, they hear yep. that, and oh. and it's really important to look at the law of averages. Absolutely, this is great uh, talking to David Roselle, a financial planner advisor in uh, in Bend, Oregon, and just. 
Um, you, you know, we're experiencing the same things where we're dealing with the same types of clients and people on, on a daily basis. And so it, it's, it's, it's great to hear from another advisor that takes a long-term view, you know what I mean? And, and who is involved in coaching and educating clients. It's, uh, it really is, uh, you know, refreshing. And, uh, you know, I wanted to say like, for example, this week, I, I know we, we pre-record our shows. And so whenever this particular episode comes out, I know it's going to be a different week in the market, but uh, David and I and Paul, we're recording this episode on a Friday. On Monday of this week, David, you know and I know what happened. And so, uh, you know, this week, I'll just tell everybody in the listening audience, whenever, I don't know, again, when this is actually going to be produced, but this week, Monday, it was down like uh, three and a half, almost 4% in, in the morning, the stock market was. And then by the end of the day, it ended up as a positive. This week has been extremely volatile, but yet I think we're going to end up the week in positive territory. And that's why you can't sit there and look at it every single day. One thing I did think about this week is that I think people that have 401ks, the one advantage is, is that they only get a statement on that, you know, pretty much once a month, maybe once a quarter. They're not, you know, used to going out there looking at it every day. Whereas if you have an investment account and you have online access, you can go look at it every day. I think the biggest mistake someone could make is looking at it every day, especially if you've invested the way you should have and, and you're taking on risk that you don't need the money, let's say for five years or longer. What's the point of looking at that. it every day? I look at, believe it or not, uh, I look at my accounts once, sometimes twice a year. Um, but <laughs> oh, you, but the right. other side of it is, is for all those listening today who are in the accumulation phase and have not yet hit the financial summit, when you hear in the news that the markets on some Monday drop three and a half percent, I say you give a high five and say this is fantastic. It, and you might and people <laughs> might say, what are you talking about? Well, you're, most people in the accumulation phase are not going to be touching these funds. Right. Well, you can't anyways without penalty to your 59 and a half years young. Right. And when you're funding your 401k or 403b each and every paycheck, you're buying three and a half percent more shares with yeah. every dollar Absolutely. That, that pay period. Correct. And that's more of a powerful thing than looking at the ups and downs. Um, right. Knowing that there hasn't been a down market that hasn't rebound to hit an all time high and looking yeah. that we're going to get more shares. I say focus on the shares, the number of shares you own rather than the price of those shares. Absolutely. I think that's outstanding uh, way to look at it. Yeah. You're continuing to buy more shares at a low rate. Your, your interest uh, that's being reinvested is buying more shares. Your dividends are paying, you know, even if you're not adding funds to it, your dividends and your interests are, uh, are buying more shares when it goes lower. So like you said, as long as you have the right approach to investing and you're a long-term investor, then the short term, you know, even if it lasts for a year or two years, short term, uh, you know, it doesn't really you know, impact you as bad as you think it does. And like you said a second ago, I want to come back to that because I, 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 I agree totally with this whole concept of uh, when clients hear that the, the stock market dropped a certain number of points. It's like, what does that actually mean from a percentage standpoint? And it's like uh, just watching the news can, can scare people. And uh, that's why I think planning and like you said, working with an advisor who has experience and has perspective is so important valuable. Exactly. You know, another way of looking at it is, you know, not just looking at it in that short term, you know, how much did it drop this week? But let's just say hypothetically it dropped, the S&P dropped 6% this week. If you look uh -huh. back over the course of one year, you'd be able to say, well, now the s and is up only 20% rather than 26%. Right. right. Uh, exactly. When it averages, you know, just over 9% per uh -huh. year, which is a great year. Absolutely. So it, it really, it's all about putting uh, this stuff in a perspective, as well as putting our lives in general in perspective. And exactly. uh, hopefully COVID has helped us all do that. Absolutely. And the whole point of all of it is to, you know, the whole point of planning and, and preparing to make sure that failure is not an option is so that you can actually do what you like to do. And that is just enjoy life. That's what people should be doing. Not looking at the stock market every day when even, you know, in their seventies and eighties, and they should have a plan and ship it out there doing some other things with their life. I like chapter seven. Again, at the beginning of that chapter, it's on retirementology. Um, Abraham Lincoln, it's not the years in your life, but the life in your years. And so people should be out there, you know, enjoying life. Have a plan for sure. Make sure your money's, you know, invested properly, but then enjoy life. Yeah, that's that's probably the best takeaway uh, from any investment 
podcast I could ever hear. Um, <laughs> I quickly touched upon in the book, you might remember uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer, yes. who is one of our lifetime's greatest philosophers and motivational speakers. And sadly, he passed away a number of years ago, but he has uh, played an enormous influence in my life. And one of the things that he said that really stuck with me, he said, the least selfish thing that we can do in life is be happy. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, that sounds selfish. What do you mean the <laughs> least selfish thing you could do is be happy? Right. And then he, he went on to say that when you're happy, you're not a burden on anybody. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And then I thought, you know, if, if you think about the least happy person that you've met, whoever mm-hmm. comes to mind, right? Um, you'd have to admit they're a burden on others. Right. And then if I said, Paul and Steve, think of the happiest person that you know, whoever, someone's coming to mind right this second. Mm -hmm. They're not a burden on anybody. Mm -hmm. And so it's really a valid point. The least selfish thing we can do in this lifetime is be happy. Outstanding. That really is. I love the way you put that and not being a burden on other people. Um, you know, one other thing I want to get to just in this, this episode, I just want to end this one with, you know, maybe just the story about, uh, peaches. I thought that was a great, uh, analogy there. You had this, uh, this old, uh, car, anything you want to tell us about, uh, peaches just real quick. <laughs> well, uh, the, the story is about how I found this car in New Zealand in 1991, mm-hmm. uh, it was a 1956 Morris Minor. And I go into the details of how no matter what car enters my life, it'll ne- I'll never get more joy than this no car. Way. And then <laughs> tw- you know, 20 years later, I'm out in Bend, Oregon, and I saw the same car with mm-hmm. the steering wheel on the English side, and it was a convertible. Mm-hmm. And I used Peaches as the face of my practice for years, kind of yep. talking about envision your life's journey, and do you see yourself in the driver's seat, and make the right turns on your financial journey. But I also realized that Peaches offers a lot of life lessons. Um, kind of uh-huh. like, like peaches, one doesn't need to be flamboyant or showy uh-huh. to get positive attention. Right. Or yeah. if you treat others well, they will treat you well. And peaches who recently celebrated her 65th birthday, Amazing. um, is still a beauty. <laughs> yeah. And we almost, we need to treat our investment accounts similar to the way we do an old classic car. Absolutely. Yeah. I thought that was a great analogy. I appreciate it, David. We're going to wrap up this episode. Uh, for those of you who are listening, um, we are going to have uh, another, uh, episode with, uh, David Roselle. We've been talking about his book that, uh, uh, it just came out. Failure is not an option. I do recommend it for everyone you know listening to the podcast today. Failure is not an option by David Roselle. DavidRosell.com. R O S E L L. Uh, Paul, it's been great uh, to listen to David, another financial planner who does uh, does uh, practice and, and and has the same philosophy really that we do here at, uh, at Wise Wealth. Absolutely, and you know I, I I love the way he talks about fear and how it's his least favorite word. You know I think. We talk a lot about the opposite of fear here, which is peace. And we know that one of the principles that we abide by is financial peace comes from having a plan. And so I hear that throughout everything we talked about. David, I really appreciate you being on today, Stephen, for you bringing him on. Uh, Looking forward to having him back again next episode. And so uh, make sure that if you haven't already, subscribe. Click the subscribe now button below. That way, when a new episode comes out, like the next episode as well, you'll get that right on your listening device. It also makes it easier for you to share with your family and friends. So thank you, Stephen. Thank you, David. And again, thank you, our listening audience. You're the reason we do this, and we wouldn't be here without you. So for everyone at Wise Wealth, this is Paul Brock reminding you that financial peace comes from having a plan, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Simplify Your Retirement podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Wise Wealth LLC or Simplify Your Retirement. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of a financial advisor or other qualified financial professionals with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning.